Celtic Fans TV and welcome to our first studio episode. I say studio, we're actually here in my living room. So we're going to review tonight's game against Sudova and then we're going to jump in and do a bit of a Twitter QA. You guys have been sending your questions over on Twitter. So we'll do that straight after we've we've discussed how the game went tonight. So Ryan, we'll just start with our initial thoughts on the performance tonight. Um I Performance tonight, um, again, Celtic very, very dominant in possession of the ball. Uh, we have this uncanny knack of absolutely controlling games um, and realistically not doing the two most important vital things, in, uh, especially in Europe, um, closing the back door uh, and being clinical um, in the final third. We started the game really sharply, I thought, um, I mean obviously Mikey Johnson does does brilliant down the left wing and then it's a great cross and then Sam can't miss really once he's once he's gets head to it and I thought after that, I mean, plain sailing, it should have been plain sailing, I thought we were going to get a lot of joy, create a lot of chances um, and as you say we dominated the ball but yep. obviously um, when you leave yourself vulnerable from set pieces it only takes... It only takes uh, one good ball into the box for you to be in trouble. That's it, and I think kind of what what we'd spoke on um, after the EK game um, out in Greece last week. We talked about how Celtic needed that goal to then step into the game and and really kind of take it on. Um, but I think this week it was the opposite effect. It was almost like the the goal knocked the stuff out of us. Um, like you said, a phenomenal ball in from Mikey Johnson uh, in the first few minutes. Um, I, I'm not an like, absolute um, shoe in for and Cham. Uh, took it really well. And then when your goal came for the set piece, Tierney gave away the uh, the free kick. Um, the ball went in, wasn't dealt with. <laughs> yes, it was someone's man. Gordon should have done better, um, as we've, we've both said. Um, Gordon should have dealt with that. Um, but that goal went in. And it just kind of knocked the stuff out of us, in my opinion. It did. It did give them a little bit of belief. Yeah. But I mean, I thought we did. We settled back to dominating possession, and yeah. And the game continued in its its usual its usual flow again. Very similar to EAK, where we had a lot of the ball um, and dictated the play, but ultimately a little bit in vain because we were so vulnerable at the back. And the problem is. I mean, this is what we see with the defence. Like, you don't give yourself a good chance of winning football matches no. if you can't defend simple set pieces, and that's where we're at just now with the defence. Aye, and uh, even like because we're sitting here and there's a lot of vulnerability in our defence at the moment. Like, it's not a unit. There's no confidence in the back four. Um, I just feel like that it's massively lacking. But that's something that that we've touched on time and time again. What about that clinical, like that lethal assassin on the the kind of final third and someone putting that ball in the back of the net time after time? You you see a lot of the big teams um, in Europe concede many goals. Um, The European Cup final last year, teams concede goals, but teams that can concede goals and score more will always win. So I feel like where we're lacking, we don't have that solid unit, those kind of back four that are going to keep the goals out and keep the back door shut like I touched on. We also don't have people in the leading line who put balls away left, right and centre. Like we just, I think that there's something missing in the final third and there's something missing at the back. And I just feel like as a, a team at the minute, yes, we're doing really well with possession. There's something Brendan Rodgers has worked on exceptionally well since he came in. To Celtic, we're now the third season of that passing out for the back, and yes, there's a kind of couple of times where people leave you wondering, have we been doing it for three seasons or touching on the third season? But it's still there's a bit of frailty massively at the back, but then there's not any finished product. We're doing a lot of passing, and we're not putting any balls in the back of the net. I think that's the the defensive problems exacerbate. The the sort of when you don't take your chances, that's that's when the defensive problems haunt you. Yeah. But I think attacking wise, it's generally 
just a lack of confidence that's kind of flown through the whole team. Yeah. I don't think there's anything like long term. I don't think there's any long term issues up front. I think you've seen Dembele snatch a couple of chances tonight. He's just back for that three, four week layoff. Um, we did have a, I mean, James Forrest had a good chance. Cuba made a great save. McGregor had that one where Dembele chipped it through him. We did create chances, but I mean, as you say, we didn't, we didn't finish them tonight. But I mean, the the real problem would be if you weren't creating any chances. We are creating the chances. Like, it's just the the sort of lack of confidence I think that's that's leading to that's causing the lack of goals. But like the the real problems are are in defence, and that's that's where we've known the problems have been for months, and that's where we need to we need to fix them as soon as we can. You're hundred percent right. We're going back. To Parkhead with the away goal, if you want to look at it that way, but a comfortable performance and in front of 60,000 at, at Parkhead, um, it's only going to 40, go one way. 40,000 maybe. 40,000 <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but it's only going to go one way when they, they come here, you would like to think. And that's, I mean, ultimately, the result isn't the, what we'd have wanted tonight, but no. I mean, there's plenty there for us. There's, there's, we dominated the aim enough. Um, and like we say, it's just a matter of taking the chances next week, which you would fancy us to do. But um, again, the abiding feeling of the whole club at the minute is that we've got to sort this defence out because, I mean, this has been week after week now. Um, the glaring issues are still there. So Aye. let's hit up these we'll, Twitter questions and answers, will we? We'll see how this goes over the next Aye. week. Right, so we're going to jump into the Twitter Q&A now. And the first question is from... Kieran Adair, at Kieran Adair 1888. Do you feel the team are lacking confidence all over the pitch? Not many seem to know what to do on the ball. Good question, Kieran. Um, I I think what we've just touched on there, uh, looking back as a recap of the game, um, the it seems to be that the defensive frailties are feeding in and expanding through the team for me. I feel like that there's just something missing at the start of this season um, and I just feel like it is a confidence issue, I just feel like we don't have that flair, the the belief that we can do what it takes, I just feel like there's something missing right through the team Yeah, I think I think it does all come back to the defensive issues because that begets nerves in the team and yeah. like you say, they didn't Sadova didn't have a, didn't have anything in the game, I think they had like two flurries forward the whole game, Aye. but when the defensive problems give them that cheap goal, it does it like gives them a bit of life and belief. And they get belief, they get belief that, from yeah. it, and then we get a bit nervous after that. And yeah. I think that does that does trans translate through the whole team, and I think it does. That's where we're not moving the ball as incisively as as we should be. Yeah, and I think it does come down to a lack of confidence as we touched on there with. So the next question is from Michael Kelly at DJ Thriller. Do you think Gordon is finished? I do. <laughs> that uh, is a good question, um, Michael. Um, again, something that we, when the first, um, when the free kick came in and Gordon didn't deal with it, we had the, the kind of brief conversation on Gordon should have taken that. Um, last week, his distribution was horrible. A couple of times tonight, distribution wasn't great. Uh, it's quick. We're all quick and emotional to write off players and say they're done, they're finished. Um, Gordon hasn't looked the sharpest in the past couple of games. For me, Michael, I don't know if that means that he's finished. Well, I think obviously, I think he's at fault for the goal tonight. It's, oh yeah, it's obviously 100%. It's, it's, it's somebody's man, but it's a good, it's a good whipped ball into the box, but. I mean, the guy's almost in the six-yard box. The goalkeeper's got to come and command that and take it. He's got to deal with it. We know about the distribution. I mean, oh, since Brendan Rodgers came in, Craig Gordon struggled with distribution. Yeah. He's not going to get better at it. He's well into his thirties. He's, it's not something he's going to develop for as long as Craig Gordon's the number one. We need to deal with the fact that his distribution, his yeah. distribution isn't good enough. Yeah. And and for, for the way that Brendan Rodgers wants us to play out for the back, that's detrimental yeah. and it doesn't help us with building attacks. Um, do I think he's finished? I wouldn't say he's finished. I think stop, shot stopping wise, he's still 
the best goalkeeper we've got at the club. The next question is from Tiernan Gallagher at Tiernan G7. Uh, what have your thoughts been on Mikey Johnson so far? Oh, <laughs> um, when when you looked at the opening few minutes to the game of the day, and it, it was really lively um, on Saturday. The one thing that I would have said of him on Saturday against Partick was that sometimes he just looked like he wanted it all on his own. Um, but he's, he's such a live wire. He's so different. He's so... Um, I think he lacks inhibition. Like he doesn't show nerves. Um, that age where he feels unstoppable um, and nothing's proved to him otherwise. And I think that's a good thing to have in the team. Um, I think Mikey Johnson looks like he's a bit of... Um, when you look at some of the stuff, that turn where he created space for himself to put the ball into the box tonight was reminiscent of... A, Scott Sinclair in his first season and like that's something that we've been missing especially down that left hand side um, I think that Mikey Johnson looks like he's got a great deal of potential for the club um, and, and he could be he could grow into a bit of a star at, at Celtic Park I think he's he's looked good he's definitely direct he's dynamic yes. his footwork's good he's quick um, I don't know if we're going to see him maybe 15, 20 times this season. I don't know if this is going to be his real breakthrough season. Um, obviously, he has. I mean, that's two starts in a row. But um, I think with Arzani coming in, that gives us a different option out wide. Um, so we'll need to see how that goes. But um, definitely been impressed with him so far. Oh. One's from Sandy Reid, uh, at Reid 1 Sandy. Do you think transfer failures mean Brendan will leave at the end of the season? I don't think... I mean... He did, Brendan did reiterate after that sort of um, tumultuous week that he had in the media um, after he made the, the comments about uh, the lack of activity that we've had so far that he's got three years left in his contract yep. and he loves life managing Celtic so I would like to think that I, it doesn't mean that we'll lose him at the end of the season I think there's a lot there's a lot of uh, stuff that's still happened this season before we can define it either way. I think, yeah. obviously, we've still got um, seven or eight days left of the transfer window um, and there's a lot of football to be played. I don't think right now the transfer business is going to mean that that he's going to want to leave. Um, I think we just need to get through this sort of uncertainty. Hopefully we'll add um, one or two players this week um, and we can just put this to bed and and everything will be fine. Hi, um, Sandy. It's one of the hot topics just now round about Celtic is uh, uh, Brendan Rodgers. Um, is he thinking that this is uh, kind of reason enough to leave? Um, Paul's just said there that we just have heard Brendan reiterate the fact that he's happy managing Celtic. He doesn't want to be anywhere else. Um, but. There is a lot of water still to go under the bridge this season. There's a lot of things to happen before um, we could define that Brendan Rodgers would ever think of up and off. And I don't think that the transfer market, um, sorry, the transfer window this time uh, would be enough to see him um, put the final nail in the coffin. Uh, I think that it has been a bit of a bugbear um, at Celtic historically for managers, but um, Brendan knows um, the board and I think kind of. Um, he's also passionate enough about the club to be here and do the very best he can with the best interest in the club. Um, hopefully, like Paul says, we can bring someone in um, over the next week. Uh, one or two additions would be nice. Uh, but that is a good question. Um, I personally don't think that it's enough for Brendan Rodgers to walk out on the club. Next question is from Mr C at Tinnitus Rages. As a Celtic supporter, my main question about the transfer window is what is it and are we supposed to be doing stuff? Well, <laughs> other Brilliant. football clubs other football clubs do seem to be like buying other footballers, which is uh, interesting. I think we should maybe try it. Um, <laughs> but jokes aside, two more leave and no more come in. Worst case scenario, discuss. Phenomenal. That is a very realistic possibility. We could lose a couple of players this week. But I think it depends who. I mean, if we lose... Ryan Christie and Scott Allen I don't think we'll be that much worse off because they no, have not don't play. They but don't play. if we were to lose Boyata and then Cham it would be disastrous 
And I think what we're sitting here and probably just referring to your question, I think we're maybe indicating that Boyata is one of those players that will leave over the next week. I think it's it's no 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 so uh, bruh. <laughs> it's no secret that Boyata wants out of the club. It's probably a mutual feeling, a mutual agreement that, that it is time for him to go out of the club with what he's done um, in the past week or so. Um, and I think if Boyata leaves plus one other and we don't get anyone in, that becomes a very, very disappointing window, in my opinion. Yep, so that brings us on nicely to uh, Craig Gordon's cat, at Moggy, <laughs> um, Given there's lots of quality centre-backs, aged between 23 and 30 that are either out of contract or have their contracts ending soon, um, why do you think we haven't signed a centre-back yet? That is... The million dollar question, that's the one that we're all scratching our heads. We've had now like two months of a transfer window, we're, we're coming towards the end. We've got a week or so left. Um, centre half was the the big area that we knew we had to strengthen in. We knew Boyata was going to the World Cup. We knew that Svitchenko was probably going to leave after his, his loan spell away. We knew that yeah. Simunovic is a liability at the best of times. That was the area that we had to strengthen. Okay, so the next one is from Connor at Connor Spend sixty seven. You seen Connor on Saturday's episode against Partick Thistle. Realistically, if we would you like to finish in the Europa League if we go through, where would you be happy with? I think I have to look at last season when we dropped out of the Champions League at third place uh, and went into the last thirty two and you just have to look at what Brendan Rogers wants to do with the club. He always wants to progress and um see the club move a bit further. So it would be nice to think that we could get to the last 32 um, in the Europa League. Whether we can or not, I would like to think realistically um, that we should be aiming for that to get out of the group stages into the last 32. That's that's my input, Connor. I think, obviously, it would depend on the group we get. There's a lot of, there's a lot of big teams in the, the Europa League this season, obviously. There's teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, Sevilla um, in the playoff as well. They've they've got a good history in this competition in recent years. So there's a lot of big teams, but on the flip side, you can get some some strange groups with uh, the lesser known names in European football. So it really would depend on the type of group we get. But I think the target would have to be to get out of the group. Um, like you say, Brendan Rodgers is always so intent on progress. So you ideally would be looking to do better than last season, which would be the last 16. Yep. But um, getting out of the group is a minimum, I think, because so obviously there's a little bit of a cloud when we don't make the Champions League. So um, I think the only thing that would really get us over that in European terms would be to get out of the group and to make the last 32 and hopefully the last 16. I think that's that's definitely what we should be aiming for, and I think... Um, getting out of the group is the minimum that the supporters would be happy with Yep, that's it for the Twitter Q&A tonight you can follow us over on Twitter at Celtic Fans TV don't forget to like and subscribe below um, let us know your own thoughts in the comments box and or any of the questions that we've discussed um, stay tuned for Sunday's content after the game against Hamilton Ackes at Celtic Park we've got some new features in the pipeline yep um, we might have some Instagram TV content, but that's top secret. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you. See you then.